I'm here to investigate a rumor. A rumor that Universal has discontinued one of its most unique guest experiences. Let's go find out if it's true. Hey, what's going on everybody? Rick here, back at Universal Studios Florida. And in addition to hunting down that rumor, I'll give you some park updates and we'll just see what's new. And there is something new as the Summer Tribute Store is opening today and we will check that out. We are inside the park and we have our first update. Letting the world know they're about to enter Minion Land. We are still waiting for the Hollywood Boulevard food and beverage kiosk to reopen. I'm so excited. I want to see what the menu is. I'm sure they've revamped it and we might have a very cool thing or two on this menu. Some of you may notice I'm a little off schedule. Normally this would be an Islands of Adventure update video, but with the store opening over here and me hunting down that rumor, I felt like I had to go ahead and be at Studios today instead of Islands of Adventure. The Tribute Store is located down Hollywood Boulevard, and I keep forgetting that maybe some of my viewers do not know what the Tribute Stores are. They are sort of like pop-up stores that Universal does three or four times a year. They'll do it for Halloween Horror Nights, Mardi Gras, Christmas, and sometimes a summer tribute store this one celebrating the 30th anniversary of jurassic park and here it is the summer tribute store currently open for team members it's going to open for pass holders in just a bit and all daytime guests can start visiting tomorrow and here's a new addition since the last time i've been in the park they've added this jurassic park prop it is amazing to see in person I'm sure the camera is not doing it justice, but excellent job by the creative team to put this out here. I can't wait to see it lit up at night. Okay, we'll just come back to this tribute store when it's open for pass holders. For now, let's continue around the park looking for updates and tracking down that rumor. A lot of characters out for meet and greets at this moment. Not just Alex, there's Dora waving to us. Hello, Dora. Beetlejuice is inside with air conditioning, spoiled brat. Also down Hollywood Boulevard, we have Homer, Betty Boop, and Scooby and the gang out. Here come some of the performers for the Mel's Drive-In Dance Show. Very fun song and dance show happens over there at Mel's Drive-In. Oh. Here comes some more of them. Well, the whole gang heading over to Mel's. What can I say? Hollywood Boulevard is popping off right now. I do want to point out this little bar by the Cafe La Bamba is going to remain as the temporary Starbucks comes and this will be the entrance to the Starbucks and they have already added signage inside of this for Starbucks. The old Woody Woodpecker Nuthouse Coaster, its favorite song is by Elton John called I'm Still Standing. And man, are we going to be so disappointed if this is not themed to the trolls so that we can call it a troller coaster? I'm very busy. Sometimes I really could use a time machine. Here in Krusty Land, the construction walls remain and the Simpsons family still remain missing from the signage up here. The Strike 3 game, it's that game that has like the air gun, is so loud. I hope the team members who work here get earplugs. Just to let you know, I have inquired at one attraction about the rumor. So I have information regarding it. I want to go to another attraction that I know used to do it, this thing that we're talking about, uh, just so I have a second source so I can relay the best information I can to you. If you're a first time viewer, or first time visitor to Universal, this is how you get into Diagon Alley. And I just walked in here with a first time visitor their reaction was, oh, sweet. The last time I was here and checked on the wait time for Gringotts, it was just 25 minutes, but the crowd level must be elevated today as the wait time is 55 minutes at the moment. Well, it's getting close to noon, so I'm gonna make my way back to the Jurassic Park Tribute store. I have to make up my mind though, I have to decide something. Am I going to go live in addition to recording it on today's update video? What to do, what to do. When we're done with the tribute store, we'll come back here and pick up where we left off. So a pass holder crowd has gathered. There's switchbacks right there, all the way this way. And then the end of the line is actually down here by the mystery machine. 
No, we're not gonna wait in that line. We're gonna apparate back over to London and pick up where we left off. Woohoo! Rough flight. Almost lost my bag. But in the end, we did make it here safe. Let's continue around the park with updates. I'm noticing a lot of students, a lot of school trips happening this time of year. This is not the place I noticed it. I didn't want to show the people in line, but people were lined up at one of these food kiosks to get food, and they lined up straight, straight into the street, so that, you know, it's kind of uh, congested. I think the smarter thing to do is, when you make these lines, is line up and come this way. Don't line up all the way into the street where people are walking. I think it's just kind of human nature to line up like directly behind someone who's in front of you. But you gotta think a little. Um, I think my way, the way I mentioned not to go into the street, uh, kind of a, I would call it a best practice. By my judgment, it looks like about half of the Fountain Show platform has been removed. They have really gotten me intrigued as to what's gonna take its place. Into New York City we go and we have got to start to lock down lunch. What will lunch be? You know what? Let's have lunch at Finnegan's. We have a couple more days of that pass holder entree and I don't want to miss out on it. Here's the menu if you guys want to scan it. I don't need it. I already know what I'm going to get. I'm going to get the pass holder special. For pass holder appreciation days, pass holders at Finnegan's can get an ale braised pork sandwich. So ale braised pork sandwich, Irish whiskey barbecue sauce, stout beer cheese sauce, pretzel bun, pickled onion, and cabbage served with wedge fries. Okay, all done with lunch. Let's do a quick food review. The, uh, the pulled pork sandwich at Finnegan's, a pass holder menu item for right now. A couple of elements on that I did not enjoy but that's a matter of personal taste. The pickled onions and cabbage just aren't my thing. But if you like those things, then you'll really like the sandwich even more. I enjoyed the sandwich. It was large chunks of tender pork. So that was fantastic. That was phenomenal. And then the two sauces that I really liked were the barbecue sauce, the whiskey barbecue sauce. It was kind of on the sweeter side. And then the cheese sauce, was more, had more of a bite to it. So those two elements worked well together. And the pretzel bun was fresh and soft. Very key with a pretzel bun, make sure it's fresh and soft, and it was. And like I said, the star of the sandwich was that thick, tender pork. Uh, now that item is gonna go away in a few days. So I'm so happy I got one last chance to try it, and it was phenomenal. If it ever comes back again, I'll be getting it again. And now, we head back into the park. I did not show it earlier, but Fast and Furious was delayed, and now the mummy is delayed as well. Here on the corner of New York City, the I. Stein and Company building. When is the Epic Preview Center coming here? When? And as we ponder that question, check out the New York City Public Library. The recovering of this facade is looking very, very nice. The New York City Library isn't the only facade being updated. In between Louis and the Irish shop, down this alley here, another facade being updated. This facade here, which is mainly like a, a brick wall to like a warehouse thing, is being redone as well. Universal sprucing up the whole joint. Let me show you some of the prizes you can win inside of the Palace Arcade. And oh my goodness, I do spot a Mardi Gras bead up there. Ha <laughs> Found one. This claw game proves Sesame Street is not just for SeaWorld. And can you make these out? These are Wizard of Oz prizes. And look at these superheroes. They're not Marvel. There's some cool looking DC plushes. The park has a weird vibe today. It seems busy and not busy at the same time. There's a personal reason as to why Nikki and I really like this Pop and Nana shop. It's because eventually, one day, when we become grandparents, I'm gonna be a papa and she wants to be a nana. You know, Nana from Peter Pan, and that's her inspiration. Oh, Nana. So for that reason, we have a special place in our heart for the Pop and Nana shop. I just hope they sell Pop and Nana t-shirts. Those guys are currently working on the Minions Cafe facade. 
putting something up right now. Hot dog. Action shot. And this facade we can now see is the Bank of Evil. <laughs> and this exterior, getting a paint job. It's coming, it's coming fast. And now I need a favor from you guys. If you're getting value out of the video, or you're just enjoying the content, please click that subscribe button. I will count in my head for six seconds and give you time to do so. Thanks for subscribing. Well, we've made it back to the tribute store, but before I go inside, let me tell you what I learned about this mysterious rumor I've been alluding to in this video. So the rumor was that the free backstage tours that Universal offers at most of the rides here, most of the rides in the trash, not everyone, but a lot of them would have these free backstage tours. The rumor was that these have been eliminated, but my research shows that is not true. I talked to several of the attractions who do the free backstage tours and they are still doing them and excited to do them. However, when I was talking to the people over by, uh, over by MIB, they were like, well, we don't really staff that anymore, so the chance of getting a backstage tour, an immigration tour at the MIB attraction, they said would be rare and difficult to get there. But the other attractions I talked to, like Fast and the Furious, and uh, The Mummy, and Jimmy Fallon, they said they still do them, and they're excited about them. And with that rumor debunked, let's head into the much shorter line for the Jurassic Park Tribute Store. So this first room is the pre-production offices for the making of the Jurassic Park movies. There's a huge mold of a T-Rex head right there in front of us as soon as we walk in. And I'm sure there's so many Easter eggs. I'm not gonna know them all, but I'm sure there's tons of them. Another large model hanging from the top. That looks to be like a T-Rex body. So this little corner is the sculpture department and the stop-motion animation department. Check that out back there. They even have the stop-motion playing on the TV there. <laughs> so much stuff to show you. Oh my goodness. I thought I was going to do just like a broad stroke review, but so many details. I might have to come back and do a video specific just for the store. Check out this little dinosaur holding the clipboard. Dr. Ian Malcolm has a whole section over here for merchandise. Just for him, even a Funko soda figure, that little soda can up there. Here, I'll give you a closer look. Plushes. The hoodie. The t-shirt, a carry bag, the coffee mugs, oh, pins of Dr. Ian Malcolm. You know what? I think a 360 spin is in order. I can say for a fact, there is a tremendous amount of very cool merchandise in here. I'm not gonna be able to show you everything today. We'll do a broad strokes review of the store and then we'll come back and do it more detailed. <laughs> Look at all the merchandise. Well, this is a very cool display case. Cool stuff everywhere, cool stuff everywhere. Are they heavy? If so, they're expensive. Night goggles. So we are going to leave the pre-production room and head into Soundstage 28, which is a closed set. Do not enter when the red light is on. Uh, we're going to go in anyway. This is an awesome display of the raptor inside the kitchen, that famous scene from the first movie. I'm making a mess in the kitchen. You're going to have to clean it up, buddy. Here's the reverse angle of the kitchen scene, complete with sound effects. Sound effects throughout the store. Does anyone know how to get to the East Dock? It could be a dangerous trip to the East Dock if we get out of the Jeep. This is a nice set here, a nice photo op for you. 
This is where the lawyer gets in trouble with the T-Rex. Oh, this is this tribute store is just phenomenal. What a great photo op. Beautiful. Hats off to the creative team. So much new merchandise. It's incredible. On to the next room. Another good photo op in here with the this raptor. Just incredible Jurassic Park merchandise. Like I said, I'm gonna have to come back. I will do a separate video on all the merchandise. This will just be a broad brushstrokes view. Here's the here's the famous arch. All the fire's going in this one. All the fire. <laughs> oh, we're heading into the snack section. We will get a treat though. We'll get a treat. So this has merchandise and snacks. <laughs> Little engine display. Of some of the merchandise. Oh, so much stuff. Oh, bo holy moly. This is gonna. It's. Oh my gosh. So. Oh, so much to show. I like this model here. Incredible. Check out that wall there. All that stuff behind the glass. All that. Oh my goodness. Holy smokes. Oh my goodness. They want my money. They've created a yellow Jurassic Park hoodie for $80. They're trying to make money off of me and I think it's going to work. All right, I just stepped outside the store. I did get a snack. Let's find a quiet space so I can talk about this with you. Oh my goodness. My reaction to the Jurassic Park tribute store, phenomenal. You can tell, <laughs> wait for it, wait for it. The creative team spared no expense. Spared no expense in making that one. It was just from uh, beginning to end, the creative team, my hat's off to you. They knocked that one out of the park with all the little sets and all the photo ops. And not to mention, I think like every piece of merchandise might be new like i've never seen it before so from design to merchandise oh the creative team just knocked that one on the park i know some people including myself may be a little disappointed with the mardi gras but that one there the the jurassic park 30th anniversary tribute store worth seeing in person uh, the camera work is just not going to do it justice i love the sets i love the dinos i i didn't even get into any of the easter eggs and I know how that creative team is. I'm sure there are tons and tons of Easter eggs. Oh, just so much to take in. I think I'm going to have to come back here. Maybe tomorrow, and hopefully, and maybe first thing, it won't be so crowded. And it's going to be a pretty long merch search video to show you all that brand new Jurassic Park merchandise. Uh, wow, just, just incredible. And now I can show you today's Jurassic Park treat, as I'm sure... Each video is gonna have a Jurassic Park treat for a while now, but this is today's, a s'mores treat. A pretty green with a Jurassic emblem on top. And oh my goodness, the first bite was phenomenal. I'm thinking, I'm thinking that's a homemade graham cracker, it's so good. Wow, my opinion of the Jurassic Park tribute store just keeps getting better and better. That was the best s'mores I've had in a long time. The marshmallow was delicious. The, uh, the icing over the top was sweet and delicious. And like I said, that graham cracker, no way that is a store-bought graham cracker. They had to have made that themselves. Tremendous, <laughs> oh my God, everything about that store is phenomenal. And I think we'll just end the video on that positive note. So as always, don't miss the magic, don't miss the fun. We'll see you next time. Here's a special shout out to Jess E. Hooper one of the producers on the channel. I forgot to put her name in the credits, so this is my makeup for it. Glad to have you on the team, Jess E. Hooper.